Hello manifestors, welcome to my channel where you can learn how to master the beautiful manifestation techniques of Neville Goddard. So to be sure that you keep on learning and manifesting, subscribe and click on the bell to be notified of each one of my videos. And today we are going to discuss how to live in the end, which is still a very misunderstood manifestation technique. So, how to live in the end? What does it really mean and how to do it? Reading all the messages and questions that I'm getting on a regular basis, it seems that a lot of people still don't understand what living in the end truly means. It seems that they have a hard time doing it and that they are not quite sure how to plant that seed. So I'm going to clarify three vital points with you today. What does it really mean to live in the end? How to do it? And how to plant that seed? So by the end of this video, you will never be confused again and you will know exactly what it means and how to live in the end. So what does it mean to live in the end? Oftentimes, I read messages, I get questions from people trying to manifest a text from their specific person, for example, or anything similar to that. But do they really want to manifest a text? The answer is no. What they want is to manifest that person in their life. That's what they truly want. However, most of those people saying that they want to manifest a text or a call also would comment that they are living in the end. But think about it. What does living in the end really means in the case of being with your SP, for example? Well, it would mean that you are living with them. Maybe you're married to them. If that were the case, would you try to manifest a text or a call from them? No. What you are really doing trying to manifest a text or any kind of message or sign from your specific person that you are saying you're living with is what we call messing with the middle. This is not living in the end. I even had the comment recently from someone trying to manifest a text from someone she was saying she was living in the end and she told me, well, what about if I want to play around? That is fine. You can do whatever you want. There are no rules. But if you play around this way, you are not living in your end. You're just playing around and testing, manifesting a text or a call. Living in the end is living with the assumption, the conviction that you are living your end result. You are living with that specific person of yours and you are seeing them every single day. Therefore, your last concern is to manifest a text or a call from them or anything similar. Why? Because you're getting that every single day. But if you are telling your subconscious mind that what you want right now is to manifest a text or a call, you are also telling your subconscious mind that you are not living with that person. Another thing that you wouldn't do if you were living with that lovers of yours it's updating people on Facebook groups and other social media about every little thing that is happening, such as, I just got a text yesterday. Or, I just got a call today. Again, think about it. Would you tell people, wow, I just got a message from my SP today? 
If you were living with them for six months or a year, the answer is no. If you are doing any of those things, you are not living in the end. You are more like in a desperate mood, which contradicts the state that you need to be in in order to live in the end. Living in the end, whatever it is that you want to manifest, is assuming 100%, which means being in the state of that person who already has what they want, who already is what they want. So you don't even want it anymore because you already have it, because it's yours. So let's see how to do this from beginning to end and you'll never be confused again. So, how to do it? How to live in the end? Neville Goddard said, Claim yourself to be. Things that are not now seen will be seen at the moment you become conscious of being that which is now not seen. What does that mean? It means that you have to find a way to be who you want to be, even though you're not right now, or see what you want to see, even though you're not seeing it right now. The easiest and most effective way to see things that you are not now seeing, which means to be or to have what you now are not or don't have in this 3D reality is to fall asleep imagining an end scene. What could be a scene which means that you are now living with your specific person? What could be a scene which means that you are now married? What could be a scene which means that your business is now very successful? What could be a scene which means that you are now very rich? What could be a scene which means that you are now healthy? The good news is that it doesn't have to be complicated. It's the other way around. Your scene needs to be very short, 10, 20 second max. You create an end scene with maybe one specific sentence that is all inclusive of what you are, of what you want, being now completely done, finished, manifested. This is how you plant the seed of your living in the end from what you want. Now, a little parenthesis here. I know, uh, and that's my case personally as well, that some people have a hard time after a busy day being tired to be able to concentrate on a scene, even though it's a short scene, before falling asleep. They are saying that they're falling asleep, not even knowing if they truly fell asleep while imagining their scene. If this is your case, try to do this during a nap. Now, if you're working during the week, you may not be able to take a nap, but I'm sure you have at least one or two days off during the week. Try to take advantage of those days to take a nap purposely to create your end scene. And once you've done it, once, twice, three times max, it's done. The seed is planted. And you don't even have to do it over and over and over. As long as you've done it right the first time, it would be enough, as a matter of fact. However, if you are a beginner, I would suggest that you do it enough times that you are sure for yourself that you are fully embedded with that scene. Now that you have planted the seed, meaning you're falling asleep at least once, visualizing your end scene over and over while losing consciousness into sleep, the last thing you want to do is to contradict what you've created during the day. Now, 
Having ups and downs, it's okay. Even having doubts at times, it's okay. Because we are also humans. When those come up, just tell yourself, okay, this is how I feel right now. But I know that it will pass. Because I know that I have planted my seed and it must grow. It must flourish because it is the law. What is not okay, however, it's to contradict what you've created in your imagination during the day, meaning as you go about your day. Because as Neville Goddard said it himself in The Power of Awareness, you cannot manifest while contradicting what you've created in your imagination. It will create a block. He quoted a Bible scripture that says, you can't serve two masters. To explain that from the Bible, as he used to do it all the time. This is very clear. It is clear from the Bible. You can't serve two masters. It is clear from Neville Goddard's own explanations about that. And it makes total sense. And I suggest that you read or listen to the book, The Power of Awareness, from Neville Goddard. So again, having doubts, doubting yourself at times, feeling a little bit down sometimes, it's okay. Just remember that when that happens, it's just because you are noticing your present reality and just tell yourself that this will pass it will get better if not today tomorrow if those things happened this is not going to destroy your manifestation but having contradictory thoughts contradictory actions all day long most of the time this can be the block between you and what you want. So just don't do that. So now that we've created our scene, falling asleep with it, so the seed could be planted, how do we live in the end? This is where a lot of people, according to all the questions and comments that I'm getting, are getting so confused. Living in the end is a state of mind. Living in the end doesn't mean you pretend or mimic gestures with invisible people who aren't there like a child at play. Living in the end means that you assume that your assumption is complete. That is your state of mind. You know that your wish is fulfilled. That's what living in the end means. It's a state of mind. It's how you feel. Your assumption of things being done, of your wish being fulfilled. That's what living in the end means. As Neville God had said many times, as soon as You've imagined it. It's created. It's done. It's finished. Because God is your imagination. The only difference is that it's not in the 3D world quite yet. But it is already here. It already exists now. It's just a matter of time until it hardens into fact as Neville used to call it, until you see it in the 3D world. So relax, be patient, and know that it's coming. And do not contradict this fact by your thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. And when you expect it the least, it will come. It will manifest in your reality. 
By the way, I have written an article that was published on the I Am Love blog that has been very successful so far and it seems that it has helped a lot of people so far. So be sure to check the links down below. I'll put the link to this article. This article talks about other areas of living in the end. It actually has a complete different content than this video, but they are both complementary of one another. So I suggest that you click the link down below and read that article as well. That's it for now. Thank you for listening. Please again subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified for more wonderful videos that will help you change your life just like this one. Bye-bye for now.